Welcome back to Surgery 101, the podcast series and app brought to you with the help of the Department of Surgery at the University of Alberta. Over the last few weeks, we've been uh, featuring some of the talks that our team has been giving at a recent conference, uh, at the Canadian Conference of Medical Education, which was held in, in Quebec City back in April. Um, we've looked at team-based assessments so far and also uh, the use of the iPhone in medical education. Um, this week we'll be hearing about another project from one of our students on the team, Kerry Wong, who will be looking at how we uh, use medical drama to teach about medicine in general. So, I'll get uh, out of your way now and let Kerry tell you all about her project. Hey everyone, my name is Kerry and I'm a second year medical student from the University of Alberta. Today I'm here to talk a little bit about our project, Teachable Moments, developing an online database of scenes from television dramas for use in medical education. So for all you educators out there, you might think that as medical students, we spend most of our time doing this, or maybe this, but in fact, um, we still do this from time to time. In a study done by Dr. Charney at Johns Hopkins, it was found that 84% of medical students have watched a medical drama in the past year. As a result, numerous educators in Canada, Australia, and the United States have tried to capitalize on this interest by using these dramas as teaching tools. So how does our group come in? In 2011, our research group, specifically Ms. Cassandra Hurt, a medical student, now resident, uh, began looking somewhat non-specifically at a number of medical dramas to look for scenes that might be useful in education. So these are some of the dramas we looked at. ER, Grey's Anatomy, House, Scrubs, and Nurse Jackie. Our goal at this point was just to watch the dramas and analyze the episodes and look for scenes that we might think are useful and there wasn't really anything specific we were looking for just for things that seemed to pop out at us and might be useful in teaching a topic. So from watching all these dramas Cassandra was able to compile a very large spreadsheet detailing all of the teachable moments she had found and from here you can see that there's a ton of information. Each entry includes information about where the clip is from, how long the clip is, a description of the clip, and a number of tags associated with the clip. And there's just a lot of information here. We love spreadsheets, obviously. And the next part of Cassandra's work was she developed a very useful guide so that educators can use, um, can get a basic understanding of each of the dramas, even if they had never seen it before. Um, this guide also very, includes very useful information about which dramas are better for which topics. For example, ER is much better for teaching medicine, while House is a lot better for looking at ethics, patient care, um, team-based learning, that kind of thing. And this paper was presented by Cassandra last year at the CCME conference. And thankfully, we were able to, pump, we were able to publish this. So how, where do I come in? Uh, I started in the summer of 2012, and when I first came in, I, the first thing I sort of wanted to do was to expand the scope of clips we had in our database. Because the previous dramas were mostly about American tertiary care, I thought that we, it would be great if we could explore rural medicine, rural family practice, as well as dramas from countries other from, than the United States. So we did some further analysis on Doc Martin, Northern Exposure, and Cardiac Arrest. So here I'll just let you know a little bit about each of these dramas, just because um, they're a little bit less well known in Canada. Doc Martin is about a surgeon who suddenly develops hemophobia, and unfortunately he's no longer able to practice. And so he needs to, so what he does is he moves to a very small rural town and starts a family practice. And you can see that um, from previously being a surgeon, it's very different to transition to a family practice. And so there's a lot of funny things that happen along the way, and a lot of things about um, how he becomes integrated into their community. Northern Exposure is the same sort of idea, but it has to do with Dr. Fleischman, who moves all the way from New York to a small town again in Alaska. And this one includes a lot of, um, a lot of detail about complementary and alternative medicine, rural health, and as well as spirituality, and some of the cultures um, that are indigenous to Alaska. The last one we chose is probably our most controversial drama, and this one is called Cardiac Arrest. Cardiac Arrest came from 
um, the United Kingdom, and it features a British hospital. And what's so controversial about it is it was the first drama, the first medical drama that exposed the darker side of medicine. It talked about ethics, lawsuits, mental health, and as well as um, all the difficulties associated with being a doctor and all the things that can happen as you um, continue on your education. So from these three dramas, we also did the same thing that Cassandra did, and what we did was we gathered um, the teachable moments from these dramas and we added them to our spreadsheet. Furthermore, we added information about these three dramas to our guide for educators. So at the end of my summer, what we really had was eight dramas, 177 episodes, and 677 total teachable moment entries. Each of these entries can range all the way from 11 seconds to 10 minutes. And you know, this is great. We have all this information. Um, each entry includes information about the drama, the season, the episode, the time span, and the description. And at this point, we felt like, okay, great, we have all this information, but how do we make this information accessible? How do we present this information so that educators around the world can use it effectively? So our answer to that question was to create an online database using wiki technology with a search function. This way, um, you don't need to comb through our spreadsheet in order to find what you need to find in order to um, add it to your lecture. So this database we created is actually usable in two different ways. So the first way you can use it is just to browse through um, our left panel listing and look through, just have a browse at the different dramas we have, the different moments, teachable moments we have. And alternatively, if you have something specifically you want to look for, we do have a search function at the top of our screen that you can use um, to type in whatever keyword you want to look for. So why don't we take it for a tour? Let's take a look. So like I said, the first way to use the database is to use the left panel listing. So on our left panel listing, you can see we've listed all of the series. And we also have a few selected topics, such as teaching, that we have highlighted on our left panel listing. You also have, we also have our top 10 teachable moments, which um, between Cassandra and I thought were the most useful um, as general teaching clips. Secondly, you can search by keyword, like I said, and there's our little search box. Um, here is a Wordle um, showing all of the different terms that all um, are in the tags associated with our clips. So you can see there's everything from syndrome to medicine to nursing to pregnancy, um, everything from mental health to physical exam procedures to differential diagnoses to um, how to talk to a patient, how to break bad news. And so um, I find that our database really does cover a very wide scope of topics and has a lot of diversity. So no matter what you're teaching, you can probably find one or two things that are related to your topic. So enough about me teaching. Why don't we take it for a spin? Let's try it out. So say you're a surgeon and you have really great communication skills. And so the faculty of medicine asks if you can start teaching the preclinical PCC course. You're a very large fan of Doc Martin, and you own all of the six seasons. And you really want to use your DVDs at home to spice up the lectures and provide real life examples so that the students can have discussion points or have an illustration of what they're learning, positive or negative. And so what you do is you head over to our database and you look for Doc Martin in the left panel listing. Here you see that even in the first episode alone, there's already three different clips that um, would, might, could be useful for your teaching. So over the next two years, you use clips from your beloved Doc Martin box set to teach the medical students. And not only do they develop great communication skills and a patient-centered approach, but they also grow to love Doc Martin. So again, that was the first way that you can use the database. Let's see the second way. So now you're a distinguished internist with an R3 who's having a little bit of trouble learning how to communicate feedback to her students. And you really want to see, um, you really want to show her some good examples of how to give feedback. But unfortunately, you have laryngitis. And so you're not very able right now to explain to her the best way to teach. So what you do is you head over to the Teachable Moments website and you type in positive teaching in the search box. And you see that 218 results pop up. So you scroll through and you find one that you particularly like and you click on it. 
So here's the clip, and let's see all the different parts of it. So the first thing you can see is um, this clip is from the show ER. It's from season one, and it's from episode nine. And also you can see that it is 40 seconds long. So this, was, this would be a very important piece of information um, when you budget your time for the lecture and when you, when you plan out how long you want your lecture to be. Secondly, highlighted in yellow are all of the tags associated with a clip. So these are keywords such as ER season one, positive teaching, and you can also see that this clip specifically is about feedback. Next, we have a brief description of the clip, so even if you run out of time and you, don't, and you don't get to preview the clip, you can still know what it's all about. Lastly, we have the information about where the clip can be found in your DVD. So you can quickly, quick, sorry, you can quickly click to 2024 without um, going through the whole episode. So what you do after you've located the clip is you head over to Amazon, you purchase the DVD set, and you send it over to the R3. The R3 watches the clip, changes her teaching style, and later she comes and wins a 3M teaching award. So what have we learned from this project? Ultimately, at the end of the day, we've found that medical students do enjoy watching medical dramas. Um, these medical dramas provide really great teaching points and discussion pieces. And I know sometimes faculties will create their own videos to show history taking or physical exam, and those videos would be fantastic to teach very black and white solid topics, but what we have here is a better depiction of real life, where um, sometimes things aren't 100%, and where you can say, um, maybe the internist did a good job in the clip doing this, but maybe not this, and so it provides more um, fodder for discussion. Lastly, um, well, sorry, as an instructor with limited time, it would be very hard for you to comb through episode after episode to find a teachable moment, um, even if you wanted to use the clip. And so what we've done is created a very user-friendly and diverse online database so that you can find these teachable moments, teachable moments very quickly and incorporate them into your lesson. Um, where do we want to go from here? So first we want to evaluate if we can integrate the use of this database and the use of these scenes um, from the dramas in our existing medical courses. And of course from there we want to bring this database to the world and make it available to educators worldwide so everyone can share um, in using this resource. Here are some references I've looked at um, in terms of doing this research. And these are the people I'd love to thank um, in helping out with this project. Ms. K sorry, Ms. Cassandra Hurt, who started off this project, Ms. Shannon Erickson, Dr. Shelley Ross, Dr. Jonathan White, the University of Alberta Teaching Scholars Program, which supported us all the way, and um, the, of course my home faculty, the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry at the U of A. And I would like to hear what your questions and comments are, so comment below if you have anything to say about our project. Thank you very much, and see you later. Thank you very much, Kerry. That was just fantastic. Um, so that's it for this week's episode of Surgery 101. As I always say at this point in the show, please visit us at surgery101.org. Um, leave a comment at our website. Rate us on iTunes. You can uh, like our Facebook group, or you can send us a tweet to surgery underscore 101 on Twitter. Um, if you've got any questions or comments for me about the show or for Kerry um, about the project, uh, please please just drop us a line at surgerypodcast at gmail.com. And we're all, always interested in uh, new ideas for new episodes and requests for topics you'd like us to cover as well. So you can use the Surgery 101 network at surgery101.org to contact us, or again, just drop us an email at surgerypodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you back here next week on Surgery 101.